Hi everyone. I'm sorry. I hope it's not too washed out. Um, we actually have a lot of sun here today and um, plus I have the lights on. So if I turn the lights off, it looks gray. So this is the best I could do for today. Um, today I was going to show the newest project bags that I have. I don't think I had any of them the last time I did a video. It's been a few months because as I explained in my last videos, we were hit by a tornado that was wrapped in hail on April 11th. And the hailstones were like this big around. They were from baseball size to grapefruit size and it totally demolished upstairs and downstairs the whole front of the house. So it's taken six months to rebuild. We just got a new front door three weeks ago and they just finished all of the work two weeks ago. So we're really happy to finally be done with all of that work and now the house is on the market. So I know it's a little echoey in here now. Um, there's no carpet downstairs. It's wood flooring and tile. So I'm sorry if it's echoing a bit um, more than it used to before. Um, but we're ready to go and because all the flooring had to be done throughout the whole property, in essence, we've already packed. So I haven't had um, a lot of craft supplies to be able to create with or to really have the time to focus on creating a lot. But I knew there were a few things I wanted to take with me out of the country before I left. And so I've kind of been working on that and I did um, kind of make a project bag and I had designed one as well and had um, another lady with an Etsy store make it for me. So I'll show you those things. Um, to start off, I'll start with the one that my friend and I ended up making. Um, going to Ecuador, I'm not sure what supplies they have. I know they have knitting stores, but I don't exactly know what type of knitting supplies they have. Um, so many of my friends recommended, even ones that live in Ecuador, that I buy the quality products here in the States because when they're imported to Ecuador, um, not only do you pay the original retail price on those items, you also pay an, an exorbitant amount of tax on them. There's what's called a 14% VAT tax going into the country, but there's also a regular tax thing on it. So in essence, it's like you buy the item twice and pay tax twice. So um, most of the items that I purchased, I did, did so on Blitzy. Um, these types of needles, the brand that I've specifically been buying, Chowgu, you cannot find at you know the big box stores like Joann's and Michael's and get to use a coupon. But on Blitzy.com, I have my referral link below, um, they do carry the higher end needles. Um, they carry Chowgu, they carry um, Tulip for like crochet, they carry, I want to say I've seen Haya Haya. I know I've seen, um, what was the other ones I got? These. Forgot the brand on these. Um, I forget if this is Knit Pro. I don't think it's Knit Picks. I'll find the link and I'll post these below. These are some sock needles I ordered online. Um, anyway, if you're looking for a good deal on knitting supplies, go ahead and use the big box coupon that Blitzy lets you use online. Um, they usually have a 40% off coupon that you can use one time monthly on their website. So um, it's a very good deal to check out if you're just trying to get your crafting supplies and things like that. So the first thing I was going to show is there's a pattern for a drawstring bag that I had downloaded. It's called the Sock Sack. And I haven't installed my strings yet, but my friend Tony came over and helped me sew it together. Um, we put some very lightweight interfacing in it to make it stand. The uh, fabrics that I purchased, I got from fabric.com and it's like an Alice in Wonderland fabric. So let me see if I can, show. it has teapots and saucers and teacups and then it has different flavors like spearmint, jasmine tea, oolong, all named on the sides. 
And so then here's where you're supposed to put the drawstring. I haven't found the ribbon that I like the best yet, um, but I'll need to do that before I go. I think I'm gonna get a black ribbon. Um, I saw white, but I'm just afraid it's gonna get too dirty too fast. So I think, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna do a black ribbon, just a black grain, and cinch it together. Now what's neat about the sock sack is, let me take those out. When you make it, it has two compartments. I will link the, um, the link to purchase the, um, the pattern down below. Uh, you purchase the PDF from their website and you can add it to your library or um, you can just download the PDF and print it off and then work from there. So it gives you the pattern and then it has these snaps inside. So this is where you can put one sock yarn and on the other side you can loop through your other sock yarn. And then they unsnap so that you can undo your balls if you need to. So you can put one ball of yarn on each side or you can keep your needles in one pocket and on this other side you can keep your socks. And on the inside it has an optional zipper pouch that you can add. So let me turn this inside out so you can see it a little better. And because it's a very lightweight interfacing, you can stand up the bag on your table just like so as you're knitting along. And then there's the zipper part on the inside. And in there, I just put some of the notions from my chow goo. So I really love this bag and this one, my friend Tony again. Thank you, Tony. She came over and helped me make this bag. I bought the fabric and um, we spent an afternoon together and we made these. So she focused on the bags while I focused on the needle holders. So what this does is you can hold your double pointed needles or it'll hold the sock needles. So I'll show you how this works. So one set that I'll be storing in this particular bag is these, these are called carbons. You spell it K-A-R-B-O-N-Z. Um, and because it's made out of carbon fiber material, and I think the tips are nickel plated. But if you're working um, with these and you just want to take a few at a time or you don't want to take everything with you, you can just store a few of these in what's called a needle, needle keeper or needle case. So there's, on this one I put three snaps because sometimes with socks, um, I might have shorter or longer. I want to say these are six inch needles. Um, and so they just pop in here and then when you snap it, because there's two short spots here, they're not going to fall out. So they'll, it's an easy way to keep them in there with them um, not falling out. But the really nice thing of why I really made this, oops, now I'm losing needles everywhere is for the um, double pointed needles or your, I'm sorry, your circular needles. Let me find one real quick. Okay, so these are my Chow Goo size ones. These are for socks. I think they're a 40 inch circular. Yeah, so a lot of people who do toe up socks two at a time prefer a 40 inch circular needle so that they can do the magic loop method um, so when you're working on those and say you want to put them away, you can just set them into here and snap it in place. Just put them side by side. And that way your project is still attached to your hook, but your work isn't going to fall off of your needles. So that's why for every project bag that um, I have, I have a matching needle keeper to go with it. So um, I saw those on Etsy and I just thought that idea was just brilliant. So I made this one um, and you can see the coordinating fabric is really pretty. Um, the nice thing with, I'm pretty sure it was fabric.com. I'll link where I bought all these fabrics as well. I think they're still available. Um, what I like about that website is it bundles um, collections together. So for example, if you happen to be a paper crafter, um, you know how scrapbook papers come in, scrapbook papers come like in a, in a grouping, say a, a designer makes several patterns that 
everything coordinates and everything matches. Well, they do the same thing with, with fabric for like quilts and, and things like that. So this collection I think had like six different types of fabrics that all coordinated with each other. And, um, and so that's the one, those are two fabrics that I got from that collection. So first I'll show um, what all I'm taking in my sock sack. Now the sock sack that I just showed, I'm not taking it with me as a carry-on on the airplane. I'm going to put it in my checked luggage. The reason why is I'm not quite sure how they'll take these particular knitting, knitting needles. Um, you know, on different things that I've read with the TSA, um, they can be a certain length, like with scissors, they can be, I want to say it was like three inches or I don't remember if it was five, but it also had mentioned something about blunt tip. And so I wasn't sure about these and I didn't want to risk it. So I'm going to go ahead and check these into um, my suitcase. And what I'm doing is since we're taking so many bags and I have so much knitting stuff now, um, I'm going to divide them up into different bags. So just in case one bag gets lost somewhere, maybe I'll still have a portion of something in another container. So um, to kind of try to keep everything together, we are taking a direct flight from uh, Dallas direct to Quito. So hopefully there's less of a chance for our stuff to get lost, but you never know with the airlines these days. So in here I am taking my carbons. Um, so these are the double pointed needles. Specifically this is the sock set by carbons. So this one goes from size um, US 0 to US 3 I believe. Um, and then I just got the newest set from Chowgu. Now this cute little um, I'll explain this little pen and pickle later. That's from an Etsy seller that made a couple of my other bags here in a minute. But I just put it on this bag because it was so cute. Um, so in here is the new mini set from Chow Goo. And this is, um, I got specifically for socks. I want to say these are five inch as well, but they might be four inch. But these are the sizes that these come in. So hopefully that is focusing for you. Um, it's size triple zero, double zero, zero one, and 1.5. And for millimeters, that's 1.5 up to 2.5 millimeters. One thing um, some had asked me on Instagram that I did want to mention here is um, some may have remembered the Chowgu needles when they first came out looked like this and they had the little bend on the end. Some people love it, some people hate it. But the other thing was with magic looping with the Chowgu cord, it's nice because it is a non-memory cord. So it'll go right back and it's very flowy and easy to work with. But this one is uh, quite a bit thicker than some others. So with this new mini set that they just made, the needle is the same size for the size one, but the cords are half the width. So the mini set actually has a different set of cords. So if you choose to buy the Chowgu, um, make sure that you get the ones that are labeled mini down here. I don't know if that's going to focus. I hope it is. Um, but instead of just saying 30 inches, it'll say mini. So this particular cord here, when you add it to the 5 inch tips, it'll make 40 inch um, interchangeable circular needles. So that's why I got an extra one of this. The kit comes with a 30 inch, a 22 inch, and a 14. So that came with the kit and I bought one extra just in case I have an extra pair of socks out on these needles. So um, this is a much finer cord than the one that came on the original size ones when Chowgu was first released. Now in this set, it also comes with a cute little um, notions box and that I've put into the middle zipper here. So into this one, 
it comes with this cute little chow goo tin. And I'm sorry, I really can't tell if my camera is showing these to you or not. There it is. So, um, this one, I forget how to open it. There we go. So it comes with a little set of stitch markers and then also the, these are the end caps you can put on the end so that you, if you need to take your cord off, you don't lose all your work. And then these are for tightening them on along with the little red heart and more T-pins. And it has a little bitty connector. So if you need something longer, I doubt you will, but it has a connector to go, you can connect two cables together. My favorite thing though is the heart. Really cute. So that I'm keeping in the center of my pouch in here. I also just picked up some Dritz safety pins. I think I got these at Walmart. They're just handy to have. And then this was from uh, Michael's, I believe. And it was just like in their dollar bin, just a measuring tape. So this one is inches. So I pretty much all my patterns are in inches. And then I do have a couple of extra of the cables. I got another 14 and another 22. So I have two cords in each size, um, just in case one breaks on me, because again, I can't replace it when I'm there. I have to wait till I come back to the States. So the next bag I'm taking with me is this large wedge bag. And this fabric is so adorable. This is how the whole project bag thing started for me. Um, I loved the fabric. I was originally looking for something with cherry blossoms. So I typed in a search for cherry blossom fabric and this Alice in Wonderland style um, fabric is what came up. It actually coordinates with the sock sack. They're part of the same um, color family. So if I pull this up next to it, you'll see they go together. So with this one, it has two different fabrics. It's a feather fabric and then this blue fabric with coral. And then she accented it with this fabric here that was on the inside of my sock sack. Now this is the one that I bought the fabric, but I just couldn't figure out how to put a wedge bag together. I'm not a big seamstress. I've sewn very little in my lifetime. Um, and I couldn't find just the right pattern really was more of the issue. And I saw these bags on Etsy and I asked her if I mailed her the fabric, if she could make me the bag. And she said, absolutely. So this is Steel City Stitcher. She can be found on Instagram. She can also be found on Etsy. She makes these. She makes the matching um, needle keepers. I happen to make my own. I knew how to do that much. So I did make my needle keeper with the feathers on the outside here. And then I put the girl on the inside. So, but she does make these. And when she makes the bag, she makes a matching, you can order a matching notions bag to go with it. So this is the big bag that is being checked. Um, it will also go into my checked luggage because these are items that I'm not sure would pass as carry-on. So in here, I have two sets of the chow goo. One is the uh, five inch interchangeables and the other one is the four inch interchangeables. And the reason why I did that is because um, with the four inch interchangeables, you're able to get the smaller um, circumference for things like sleeves and um, I forgot what are other tube types of things without doing magic loop. So that's why I have both sets. Um, and since they are metal tips and quite and sharper, I just didn't want to risk it not being able to go through. So for example, th this is the four inch set and they're metal. So. Um, I've heard a lot of people saying they've gone through without any problems, at least within the U.S., 
but I'm not sure how it will be for a longer international flight. So if any of you have specifically taken metal interchangeable needles out of the country or even coming from out of the country back in, please let me know um, because I would like to at least carry one of these sets with me in my carry-on so if the bag is lost I don't lose both of them. Um, so that's in here. Then I have this little Rita Kuma can. I actually bought it for my daughter but in the midst of the move and everything she was purging a lot of stuff and this was one of them so I figured it was a close enough color match to my bag. So in here I just threw in um, safety pins for this particular bag and Haya Haya makes uh, or sells these colored stitch markers. So I went ahead and, or I guess you could call them garment pins, um, but they sell them in, di in a package of multicolors. So I threw those in there. And then that circle, the plastic circle, this is called, I believe it's called tag a stitch. So you use one of those garment pins and you can tag what stitch that is. So you don't necessarily have to go back to your pattern every single time. For example, this is make one right. Um, so as you put it across your needle, you know that that's the next stitch that you need to make. Um, pearl wise, it even has like wrong side, right side, pearl two together, um, and then it has numbers one through 10, and then it has a few blank tags if you wanna name some yourself. So those are just handy to have. So those are in there. Some other large items that I wasn't quite sure about if I could take them with me is Knitter's Pride has these really huge um, cable or stitch holders. So I loved the colors. You know, at Joann's and Michael's, um, you can get them, but they're either plastic or they're just not very pretty. Um, but the Knitter's Pride has that pretty turquoise color. And then Haya Haya sends, sells another set that's slightly smaller and it's those pretty bright colors as well. So I put both of these, I kept them in their original packaging so that if they're going through all of our stuff in customs, I don't end up losing all of those needles. Um, this one I believe I got on Blitzy, I just wanted to try it. It's by Clover. This one you can find at, this brand you can find at all the big box stores. Joann's has it, Michael's has it, I think even Walmart has that. Now in my sets, none of them come with the US 2.5 or the three millimeter. And there are some socks that I've seen that use three millimeter. So I went ahead and got that interchangeable set. And this is another nice thing about Blitzy is that those odd little things that, you, that don't necessarily come in the kit, many times they'll have it. So I got this one um, and in these kits, they have extra slots. So again, this is the Chowgu Twist collection. I believe this one is the five inch. And you'll see the set starts at size two, US two, and then it jumps to three. So this one is a US two and a half or three millimeter. Well, all of these little pockets here are empty. So I can just set this set right in here in between the two and three and I have an additional size that I didn't have before in my complete set. So the other thing I have is, um, it's nice, her little notions pouch, it just unclips so you can take it right off the side of your, side of your bag. She just does such a great job. Um, so she put a little gray zipper on it. And in here, I got the little, um, you can find these at big box stores as well, Chibi. Now, in this one, I've combined different sizes because I just wanted all my needles in one case. So since this is my bigger project bag, I put the larger um, tapestry needles in here. So one is straight and one is curved. The curved one in particular, I like when I'm weaving in ends on thicker weighted yarns. Um, and then in here, I also put one of the keys for the um, interchangeable needles, just in case I happen to not have one with me. I also found these on Etsy. 
They're cute little scissors. Now these are super sharp, so even though they're tiny, I've read on um, Amazon reviews that some people, some knitters ended up getting these taken away in customs when they were coming from South America into the U.S. Uh, the U.S. didn't take them on this end, but um, when they were coming from South America in, the South American ones took them. So that's why this one is going into checked luggage. It is small, but it is very sharp. So this one I'm putting with my checked luggage to hopefully avoid getting these confiscated. Um, I also found this at Walmart. You can also find them on eBay and you can find them on Etsy. They're just a little counter and you just click up and then if you need a reset, you just click the reset button, it goes back to zero. And after a few minutes, if you haven't messed with it, it turns off. And then all you do is hit the button again and it'll pull up the same number where it left off. It, it doesn't reset. So here. And then I found these Haya Haya pandas. They are so cute. Um, I want to say these little ones fit my interchangeables and the large ones don't. Um, it just depends on your connector. So these fit on my Chowgu small cables, small interchangeable. But the Haya Haya screw is actually quite a bit larger than the Chowgu uh, large cables. So maybe one day if I get any Haya Hayas, I'll have those. So that's it for my large project wedge bag. So my last project bag is this smaller one. I think this one is considered Steel City Stitcher's medium sized project bag. Again, it's another wedge bag, has the cute little handle on the side and the matching notions pouch. I forgot to mention when she makes her bag, she also includes a cute little charm, matching charm with a lobster clasp. So you can use it as a um, stitch marker to keep track or progress marker of where you're at with your work. On my other one, she put a teacup. I think you can see it there. Yeah. So that one has a teacup and this one has a cute little bicycle. This one I just saw on her Etsy store and she had it in different colors. I wanna say I saw a blue one. But I wanted this color because the bicycle I have looks almost identical to this. So it's kind of the vintage like bikes and um, my bike won't be going with me initially. Uh, it's going into storage. So this is a nice reminder of, of home. So um, I loved the color of the clip she ended up using on this Notions bag. So this is the bag that I am taking with me in my carry-on. So if everything else under the sun gets lost, I will have this set with me. So first I'll start with a little Notions pouch of what I'm keeping in there. I have another one of those. I got it on Etsy. This one is in teal. Um, it's a row counter. And then these are some stitch markers that I had made with glass beads and they fit onto the larger projects and larger needles. So I put that one in here, and then I put some blunt tipped scissors. So they are small scissors again, but they're not the super sharp tips. Um, these have a blunt edge on them, and the fulcrum is right here, so this isn't even two inches long. I think it's like an inch, inch and a half at the most. So these should pass security on all levels okay. So um, they're super cute as well. And so these are the ones that are going with me on the airplane. So that's what's in the little Notions pouch. Now in the bag itself, what's nice about these wedge bags as well is you can fold them over when you're working on projects too. Now I have too much stuff in here to do that right now, but it will fold over. Um, so into this one, I do have my Knitter's Pride Carbons. So these, again, I did get on Blitzy. 
Um, I was trying to remember the name of them earlier in the video. The brand is called Knitter's Pride and then they're carbons. So this is um, four sets of needles in here along with I bought additional cables just in case anything decides to break on me abroad. Um, yeah. What's nice with Knitter's Pride is you'll notice the cables are different colors. That's because each cable is a different color for the length. So if you happen to measure, uh, memorize the colors, you don't have to try to read the little bitty letters or measure your cable to figure out how long it is. She also made the matching um, needle case, so I got that. And then I put my bamboo set in here. So I figure wood is safe enough to take on the airplane. So for the bamboo set, I only have the small sizes. So this goes from US 2 to US 8. I have a couple of uh, nine inch circulars in here for socks. Um, and then I have the extra cables in here. Now the nice thing with the bamboo set by Chowgu is these are called spin and they actually spin on the cable. So if you're looking for that particular feature, this is the only one from um, Chowgu that does that. But um, you can buy the cords, the spin cords, and put them on the twist set, the red sets, and it will give you that spin action as well. It's a different type of cord. They're like a nylon cord. So also in here, I did also do another chibi needle case. Now this one has more of a variety of smaller sewing needles all the way to the big ones. Since this is a medium bag, I figured it would probably carry some of my smaller projects. I got this from Daiso. It's another tape measure. Um, the nice thing about this one is since it's from a Japanese company, it has uh, inches and it has centimeters on the back. So just depending on your pattern, sometimes it's handy to have a tape measure that has centimeters on it. Um, and the last thing I decided to take with me is this little bitty scale. I don't know if you can see it. This is actually a scale my kids used in school for science projects. You know, my kids do homeschool. And um, this was one of the items that you can just turn it on and it has different modes for grams, um, ounces, and so you can just put it on here and measure your yarn. So for example, if you're dividing out your sock yarn and if you wanna know if you have the same gram amount in each ball, you can just set it on here. Or if you just have a little bit left and you're curious how many grams that is, you can just set it on here and you know exactly how much you have. So that's coming with me as well. So that's it for my project bags today. I'll post pictures at the end of this video of close-ups of the bags so that you get a better look at them. Um, but this is what's coming with me to Ecuador. Hopefully I'll be able to get some more videos squeezed in, but until next time, maybe we'll be in a different location by the next time I get to video for you. Thank you so much for watching this episode. Again, I can be found on Instagram at Alpaca My Yarn. I also have a Ravelry ID, Alpaca My Yarn, and I'll link all of those below. But thank you so much again for watching, and I look forward to seeing your podcasts. Please comment below. Let me know if you do vlogging or videos. I love watching everyone's videos on YouTube. I probably watch that more than I watch TV. So please go ahead and comment below and let me know about your channel so I can watch yours as well. Thank you so much for watching.